Hi everyone, Summer here with Astaria Sen, and I'm gonna do a VR to the lovely Peekaboo Rose, who is talking about um, the Three of Swords and kind of like her point of view on it and um, how the cards, like the original Three of Swords is a heart with swords put through it and how that can be a very um, distraught kind of image or um, very unfriendly, I guess. I, I, that's how I would put it, image. And how just changing it a little bit or um, a lot <laughs> could change the whole entire aspect of the card and how it's perceived and everything. So uh, she asked what our point of view of the Three of Swords and her video was, so I decided to do a VR to it. Now, um, I've only got four four decks I'm using this on and um, they're pretty unique decks. So uh, the first one I wanted to talk about was my Fairy Lights Tarot Three of Swords. This is the Three of Swords in the Fairy Lights Tarot and it is completely not within the ballpark of traditional RWS. Um, even the description is not. Now the different with the Fairy Lights Tarot and why this one's important to me uh, is coming up. but. This is actually only one half of, of a full reading, I guess, because the Fairy Lights Tarot, if you know me, I've talked about the Fairy Lights Tarot before, and it's actually a, a, the artist created a picture, cut it in half, so there's two pieces, two tarot cards that come together to make one picture for um, a reading, which really brings out new meanings to the readings, okay? So in the Fairy Lights Tarot, the Three of Swords is about illusion um, and being able to overcome those illusions. Uh, you see that there's a moon in the water, but there's no moon up here. But you see three moons down here. There's just a lot going on, right? And then on the other side of that, it, the other side of the pond, so to speak, is this idea of um, this is like a golden road, like a golden road to all the wonderful things that are um, could happen or are about to happen. So. Um, I feel like this, if you're going to read the Three of Swords out of this, it's not so much about heartbreak as it is seeing through uh, your emotional um, baggage or your emotional stuff, all the stuff that isn't necessarily true in order to get to that truer part, which on the other side of the pond could be something way, way, way better if you would just let go of the illusion. So that's why I really like this. I do like the non-traditional aspect of it, but I do have cards that have a little more traditional aspects too. So don't worry. <laughs> I'm not completely outside of the range, I promise. <laughs> Just this like one deck is. And I really like that aspect of it because it gives me a whole new perspective on the Three of Swords. If this was just a heart with swords in it, I wouldn't have got the same context from it as I do if it's completely altered this way. Um, so I do like that aspect, just saying. <laughs> and I really like the Fairy Lights Tarot because it just brings so much more to everything. So, all right, so there's that. The other one I wanted to show you was the Tarot of Dreams. This is a little bit more traditional. Um, and this is the Three of Swords in the Tarot of Dreams by Marchetti. So this one has the traditional Three Swords, but... And the sadness even, like you can see the person crying. Um, there's no heart. Like I don't see a heart anywhere in it, but the hands are covering where the heart could be. Um, so when we're looking at cards, that's that's what we're seeing is is that side where the heart is. Because um, it's opposite, it's a, the opposite of us, right? So, uh, or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Uh, <laughs> Somebody was telling me that when you're looking at the cards, how the cards are viewed is if if the right hand is being raised, it's actually a left hand being raised because you're viewing it from the opposite direction. So that's what I was talking about. Anyways, so uh, hands are covering the heart. Uh, the swords are pointing towards the hands. Uh, none of them are penetrating the hands, though. They're not. They're just above it. They're just sitting there and they're you can see the heart and the mind. So they're in between the heart and the mind. So I feel like this gives a different aspect of the Three of Swords as in, you know, maybe 
the idea that your mind controls the swords because they are pointing down from the mind and the mind is what controls the body, right? So this idea that it's all coming down to the heart from the mind could be um, taken in a different way. The sadness could be something that you have to overcome. I like the overcome aspect, if you can't tell, of Three of Swords. Uh, the other one I have is in the Mystic Fairy Tarot. This is the Three of Sword in the Mystic Fairy Tarot. It's a little bit more non-traditional, but you still have that sadness there. The Three of Swords is about um, something going wrong. And in this card, you can see like the rose that is blooming, and then you can see the rose and flowers around it that's dying. And these two people who have been taking care of the garden are having such a hard time because they don't understand why. And you can see them touching their brains like they're trying to figure out why is this happening. So I think that this also brings a traditional aspect of the Three of Swords where you are using your brain to try to come out of the pain, right? To kind of work things out, to work through things, to really uh, move forward. And you can't move forward if you just sit inside your head. But at the same time, how do you get out of that, right? Um, so the last deck I have is actually a brand new deck. I haven't even done a walkthrough on it on my channel. It's the Harmonious Tarot in the mini form. And the Three of Sword is very interesting in this one. So it is mini, so I'm going to get as close as I possibly can. So you have traditional up here. You have this traditional aspect, the Three of Swords going through the heart. You don't have any blood dripping or anything like that, though. And then let me see here. Get a little bit closer. All right, so then you see Cupid right? Because Cupid is all about love and the heart and his arrow. His arrow is being gifted back to him by the lady in the water, okay? Being, it's almost like, well, I don't know that it's necessarily being gifted back so much as held. They're both holding it. He's holding onto the back end. She's holding onto the front end. So there's a give and take uh, between the two. He's air and she's water. So, um, that's the mind and the emotional side. So there's a, a give and take between the mind and, and, and the heart. So I think this is an interesting way of looking at the Three of Swords too. And depending on the context of the reading, could depend on how this card is actually read because both of them are holding onto it, right? So both of them are balancing this arrow that's not touching the ground. They're keeping it afloat. So it's this idea that has to go between the two of them. So I really like this aspect. Now, she did touch, Peekaboo Rose touched on the Ten of Swords too. I'm not going to go through all of these cards on Ten of Swords. I just have one. One Ten of Swords that I wanted to show you, also in the Harmonious Tarot, and one of the reasons why I'm really starting to like this deck. So here's the Ten of Swords. Now, Peekaboo Rose talked about how the traditional one of the sword stabbing into the back is really, you know, detrimental, and then there's blood all over the ground, and Ten of Swords is like a sense of completion. I agree with her on that. This idea that that something is complete and you're moving forward with something. And when you have the traditional Ten of Swords, it doesn't feel like that um, sense of completion. Now, if I really thought about it and I really concentrate on it, then I can consider the fact that the Ten of Swords, even with all of them in your bag, is this idea that you have just gone through all of these hardships and it's now over. So I can kind of see the positive spin on that and kind of bring it to a better light or... Um, draw into that idea that that completion is still there. It's just, it feels and looks really detrimental and harsh. But this Ten of Swords in the Harmonious Tarot is way different. Like you can see the swords above still. And then there's three people here. And the guy, I think that's a guy, he's on the ground and, you know, they look like they're trying to help him somehow, like checking to see if he's hurt or if he needs help bending down to help him up or give him something to drink you know that kind of thing so i think that's very interesting and then there's some of those swords on the ground as if a battle has taken place something has happened um and is already over and now you have this help to bring you back up so i think this is a really really interesting card i do want to play with this deck more so yeah that's what i wanted to show you that's what i have um and i really think that we, we bring a bunch to the cards, right? But it's also in the way the reading goes. The Three of Swords or Ten of Swords is also dependent on the cards around it. I personally believe when I'm doing tarot, even for myself, I definitely take the aspects of the cards around it to try and draw out what the Three of Swords might actually mean versus heart and mind. If there is a lot of um, 
a lot of mind cards, a lot of air cards, a lot of, you know, thinking cards, then it might be more that your thoughts are impeding you. And if it's more cups, then it could be that your heart is hurting you more or something emotional is standing in your way and you have to like slice through it kind of aspect. Okay. All right. So that's what I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a very great day.